Hey, what's up everyone? Greetings to you. Greetings, greetings, greetings from whatever part of the world you're from. Hello, it is Queenly Vibes here. So I am back with another video. And yeah, we got to chat about some things. It was some things um, laid up on, you know, laid upon my heart. And I was deeply disturbed by some things that I heard and everything so I just wanted to come on and share my faith and share a few scriptures um, on this particular uh, topic okay so first and foremost um, if this is your first time coming on to my channel go ahead and subscribe and um, like this video share the video and I certainly would appreciate it. Leave a comment. Let's have um, some discussions, okay? So this evening's discussion will be about the red table talk. Yes, the red, the red table talk, which I, I don't faithfully watch. Um, I, I stopped watching the red table talk um, <clears throat> Definitely after the big um, show between with uh, Jada and Will about um, August Alcina and all of that or what have you. I was never really a, a diehard fan of the show or anything like that. But, <clears throat> you know, I watched a couple of times just to see what the topics were about and, you know, what was going on and everything. So... And, you know, some of the shows were okay. And then, you know, some of the shows for me is kind of like, okay, this, this is where I draw the line and probably where I need to jump ship. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to chat about all of that. Okay. So what what caught my attention, I was on Facebook, you know, minding my business and everything, and the Red Table Talk, it, it, you know, it did a pop-up on my feed. So the topic was um, about Janelle Monet, who is, um, a, I don't know if I can say she's a pop artist or you know she's a she's a singer and you know and everything so um and willow did you know most of the interviewing this was uh one of the people that willow smith wanted to interview because come to find out she's obsessed with her according to willow smith and she's one of the people uh that she one of the people that she admires in this world the most you know so i found out a lot you know watching this episode and everything and so definitely i'm just going to pinpoint a lot of what disturbed me with uh janelle monet so like i said we have to be careful in in what's going on and in what we're watching and everything like that with the views of a lot of these people that you know are celebrities and everything we i don't care if we enjoy the talent and you know and some of the talent we have to tune out as well you know certain singers whoever as a born again believer we're just going to have to not you know, listen to them and listen to uh, music that is pleasing to God. And, you know, as we're on this uh, faith walk, um, we're going to have to do things that pleases the Lord. And, you know, and it is a it is a process, you know, on this journey. So definitely my advice to um, anyone on this uh, faith journey that we're living for Jesus Christ, um, let Holy Spirit lead you. And um, if there's some things that are going to get you out of the will of God, you know, you're going to have to die out of that, you know. 
and again like I said it is it is a process but God will give us strength definitely so yeah I, I just had to you know just I wanted to share scriptures and everything because um, you know and my thing is people can idolize who they choose to idolize but the word of God tells us that we don't make anyone or anything, you know, our God. You know, we are not supposed to idolize anyone. You know, we don't lift anything or anyone up above God. He is a jealous God. He is God Almighty. He is the one that deserves all of the all of the glory. There's no one else or anything else that can share that space with him okay okay so Janelle Monet she comes on and Willow Smith is just she's just in awe of you know Jan Janelle Monet and everything and again this is not taken away from Janelle Monet's talents or anything like that because I think she's a pretty good actress as well as um, you know a singer and everything. I have seen her in a couple of movies that I thought she was good in, um, Hidden Figures. Um, there, there's some other movies I might remember, you know, as we you know go forth with this. But this is what Janelle Monet had to say. So she comes on the show and everything. And, you know, of course, they greet her with love, all of this, that, and the third. So Willow Smith, she goes into the interview. So right away, they dive in. Um, you know, they ask her, how, how did she grow up? Where, where is she from? She's from Kansas. She spoke about her, her big family. She spoke about the fact that um, her family is very religious and that she comes from a Baptist uh, background, okay? And she, she spoke about how she pretty much didn't care for that. She didn't like the restriction of, you know, coming up um, with, you know, with, a, with the religion and everything. She felt like it you know, it would, it restricted her from being her true self and all of that. And, you know, my thing is, I grew up Pentecostal and all of that on both sides of my family. And, you know, when you're, when you're a kid, you know, you don't quite understand things. So, of course, if you're being told, oh, you can't listen to certain things, um, certain songs that you love or what have you, you can't do this, you can't do that. It, it tends to, you know, uh, make you angry. It, it you know, <clears throat> excuse me. It, it tends to kind of turn you off and all of that. So I get that. But how I was blessed is that, you know, my mom was not that type, you know, a Christian. My mom believed in having a good time and everything. She didn't uh, put a bunch of restrictions on me and my sister. She let us you know, live our, our teenage years and everything. She let us live life because she lived her life. You know, we went to football games, basketball games. We went to school dances. We went to concerts. You know, we did a lot, you know. So, shouts out to mommy. Thank God for her. It was only until I became a Christian on my own as an adult that I learned, um, you know, <laughs> that some of the people in the church aren't so nice and, you know, but we'll talk about that another time, okay, because it still has, it has nothing to do with your personal relationship with the Lord, okay? Anyhow, back to Janelle. So, yeah, she is from Kansas. Um... She spoke about um, her, I think, her grandparents being 
sharecroppers uh, from Mississippi. And again, that she has a very large uh, family, 49 uh, first cousins, you know, all of that. So I'm in my notes here. <laughs> so then Willow Smith asks her about her sexuality. And my thing is, I think Willow is definitely smitten with her because I think this is the same lifestyle that she's living now, you know. She expressed that, you know, she um, is sexually attracted to uh, men and women, you know. So, again, she's obsessed with Janelle. You all know me and my hot tea here. Okay, so she... She asked her how, you know, what was it like? Um, when did she uh, first, you know, find out about her sexuality and what she liked or, you know, whatever. So, you know, Janelle said that she came out in uh, 2018. But I'm pretty sure, you know, she experienced other things probably early on, you know, what have you. But... She actually came out, you know, in um, 2018. Now, this is just, uh, I'm just going to make a disclaimer. I love all people, you know. Um, it's, you know, my thing is, do not take this and, you know, be offended or whatever the case may be. This is showing the love of Jesus Christ by making sure that people know the truth and the truth is God's word you know and this is what this is what God is you know telling us this is how the Lord wants us to live okay so it's not you know that you know ministers or people of God or Christians or what have you is attacking um, a group of people or what have you. I love all people. Um, I love everyone that's a part of the LGB, you know, community or what have you. But it is our, you know, when we know the truth, it is our responsibility to share the truth. And that's how you show love. You, you let people know what the word of God says. Okay. No matter how, how it hurts, you know, and this is why I say it's a process, because even in my life, there are some times, you know, where I go into the word and I'm like, wow, ouch, that hurts. You know what I mean? And I have to repent for something that, you know, I know that is out of the will of God and everything, you know. <laughs> and again, this is the word of the Lord, you know, so we have to obey him, you know. It, it is what it is. And God Almighty, I mean, you can't take the word of <clears throat> anyone else. You know, he is God Almighty. He's the one that we should honor and obey. You know, not not even myself. If, if I'm saying something that's out of the will of God, you know, don't listen to me. Go into the word for yourself, right? So... Yeah, 2018, she said that she came out, and she came out as a pansexual, which a pansexual is attracted to all sexes, okay? Then she also said that she's non-binary, um, which she doesn't commit to one specific gender, okay? So, two things here. Um, and then this was really the kicker for me. And this is why I said, wow. Okay. She said that um, as she was explaining, you know, about her identity and, and all of that and how she lives her life. And, you know, because Willow praised her 
for being so confident and so unbothered by people and and she's just living in her truth she's she's living her life okay <clears throat> so what was the kicker for me is that as she went on to explain all of that she said um, God is bigger than the he and the she and she said that if God uh, created me and, and God loves me I am everything okay she says that I I'm I'm everything because God loves me and she she believes that God is bigger than the he and the she so when she said that 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 completely blew me that completely blew me because this is my thing God gives us all free will and you can choose to live how, however you choose to live but don't don't bring God into it God is very specific with his word and what he says in his word and we can't change that we can't change God we have to allow God's word to change us so that we can become more holy like him it's for us to change for him not the other way around we can't we can't make and, and put God in boxes or turn him into any and everything to fit us we can't uh, have God to fit our personal sin we have to be delivered and changed because of his word so I, I just couldn't believe that she, you know, that she actually said that, you know. So here's where I'm going to share. I'm going to share a couple of scriptures in a minute. So when she said that, I, you know, like I said, I, I was just stunned, but, you know, we're, we're living in perilous times, so any and everything is going on right now. There is a lot going on in this world, and it's a lot of wickedness, and a lot of uh, just ungodliness that's taking place in this world today, okay? So, then there's this other thing that went on okay so Jada the mom you know they questioned her here and there the mom came out on the show her and her mother very close she has a beautiful mom and everything and you know I'm, I'm not against her mom loving her child she's doing what she's you know what she should do love her daughter and everything but honestly if I had a daughter who was living that lifestyle, I would still love her, but I would still just let her know the word of God. And if she chooses to live how she chooses to, you know, to live, then so be it. But at least you know that she knows the truth. Okay. So, yeah, what was the other point? Um, yeah, so she said that she didn't you know at first it bothered her what people thought of her and all of that you know she went through all of that then she you know she just said that she was just you know she was going to live in her truth and everything and if her family didn't accept her and if they had a problem with her then they also had a problem with her money you know she said that oh if you have a problem you know my family have a problem with my lifestyle they should also have a problem with my LGBT 
element of P money. You know? So I, I just I'm just like, hmm, okay. So now she, you know, she's come out as what she what she has come out as. And and whoever doesn't like it in her family or probably would share the word of God with her, she threat she threatens them with not helping them out financially. <laughs> you know? Um, I, I just thought that was pretty interesting. So I'm like, okay, so Okay, you know, so that 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 just seemed like a little bullyish to me or you know, you can't make people accept that. Yes, they, you know, we can love you, but Okay, anyhow. So then she went on and let's see. And you know what I noticed? Um, there were several times, you know, um, during the interview, and they point the camera at, um, I think they call, you know, it's Gammy, Jada's mom. And she just had this look on her face, you know. She's always said that, you know, this is, you know, it's, it's a different time for her and all of that. I think, I think Gam is very uncomfortable with a lot that's going on you know I think she's uncomfortable with her granddaughter I think at times she gets very uncomfortable with uh, Jada and just a lot just does not make you know sense for her and you can see it on her face then you have Willow who's um, I don't know for me at times she's I don't know she's very cringy you know, um, even given the, in, you know, when she does these, the interviews, I don't know, it kind of seems like she's trying too hard to be in her mom's shoes or something like that. I, I don't know what it is. It's just a very cringy <laughs> situation going on, you know. So, and, and I said this in another uh, video. I, I really, in my opinion, I think they need to put this red table talk on ice because I really don't see nothing good coming from it anymore. Since all of the, the scandal and everything like that, it, it just seems like more and more Jada is, is losing her mind. That, I don't know, that's just my opinion. Anyhow. Okay, so <clears throat> then another thing, Janelle Monet, she has this, um, she has another fan that, you know, is kind of like Willow Smith, you know, who's obsessed with her, who's completely obsessed with her. She, um, she thought she was coming to the Red Table Talk just to talk about <laughs> Janelle Monet and how she's heavily influenced by her, but then in actuality, she comes there to meet her and she's flabbergasted. She can barely speak or what have you, so much so until Janelle was kind of looking at her like, uh, okay, you can, you can calm down, okay. And this is my thing. She's influencing people watching her lifestyle and her lifestyle is ungodly. That's that's very dangerous. The things that she's speaking and saying about God is is very very dangerous. You know, this young lady was so inspired by, you know, inspired by her because of the way she dresses with tuxedos and this and that. And I'm not going to lie, Janelle, you know, she have a she have a nice style you know, with certain outfits that, you know, she wears. And like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a prude or anything like that. <clears throat> I just believe in the word of God. You know, she has a nice style about her, nice looking girl and everything, and she is talented. But her lifestyle is ungodly and it's very dangerous that people are looking up to her. This young lady, she... Wore, she wore a tuxedo to her prom 
took her girlfriend to the prom or what have you because she's looking up to Janelle Monet being free, living her, you know, her life. You know, so we're going to have to give it an account of with how we live that is out of the will of God. And, you know, like I said, I wanted to come out and just say something because I pray that someone will hear the truth and give their life to Jesus Christ and be saved, believe in God's word, you know, because at the ending of the day, when you stand before him, you're going to have to give a, an, an account of the life that you have lived. There is life after this life. There is life after this natural body being put back to dust. This natural body is going back to dust one day. And no man knows the day nor the hour. And we're going to have to stand before the Lord and be judged. You know, I don't care what you're dealing with, what habits you have. And this isn't just about homosexuality because um, sexual immorality is ungodly as well. Whether it's fornication, adultery, you know, what, whatever, you know. We're going to have to stand and be judged before the Lord. You know, we we have to live this lifestyle if we want to please God. If you're choosing God, we have to do it his way. And that's just it. He knows what's, what's best for us. We can't question everything. We just have to obey. And I don't care what your struggles are. Give them to the Lord, you know. Work at it on your journey in the Lord. Okay? So, here's the scriptures that I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> let's see, how am I going to do this? Okay. Yeah, here are the scriptures that I wanted to share to let someone know that what she had to say um, and how she's living is ungodly. Okay? And don't look up to these celebrities as if, you know, they got it all together and you know that they're just too cool for school they got it going on no that you know that's not it at all okay so let me go into leviticus okay and this is leviticus 18 and verse uh 22. Okay, and it says, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. Okay. So it's talking about a man lying with a man. And it's, it's an abomination. This is not please God. Okay, so let me go to the... King James Version, which is what I prefer. Okay, so let me try to move the screen over. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the King James Version says that, that it is an abomination. Okay, and people people hate to hear this, this stuff, but my thing is, I don't hate the Word of God. I don't care, you know, where I fall short. I, I, I still want to know the Word of God. 
Like, I don't, I don't understand why people get so angry. I feel that people, they get so angry because they want to live their life how they want to live it. And, and you know, they don't want to feel convicted. They don't want to be told that it's wrong. They just want to freely do what they want to do. And again, you, you do have that choice. You know, you have that choice. It, it doesn't make it right in the eyes of the Lord, but you have that choice. Okay. So let me pull up another scripture here. So my other scripture is First uh, Corinthians uh, verse six, uh, nine, and ten. So let's go there really quickly. I like to pull everything up on the big screen. Okay, six and nine. So yeah, definitely when she, you know, when she said, you know, God is bigger than the he and, and the she, you know, God is a, is a perfect God. He created male and female for a reason and for a purpose. God doesn't make any mistakes, you know. So basically what she said was pretty much like she was blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. She was blaspheming against the word of God. You know, again, you, you, this is your choice to live this way. Don't drag God into it. Where does it say in the word of God that God is bigger than the, the he or the she and that, oh, I am everything. I can be everything. That's, that's not what the word of God says. That is contrary to the word of God, you know, not unless you're speaking of some different type of God. I don't know what God she's talking about, but it, this is not our holy God, our true and living God. I don't know what she's talking about. Okay. So this is, yeah, first Corinthians uh, chapter six, nine and 10. It says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor um, adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves and mankind. And uh, 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, and you know, covetous, that's a big one too. And you know, it seems like it's something light, but this is this is a big deal, you know, to God. Nor drunkard, nor drunkards, excuse me, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So this is this is clearly telling us what 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 God says you know unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God and he listed all of these things okay I have two more scriptures here um, let's see what else is the same <clears throat> You know, so this is why this is why it's so good for us to to know the word of God and you know how it just spoke about um, idolaters and everything. 
make no one or nothing your idol. Okay? Because these people are out here, they're, they're living a lifestyle that is not pleasing to God. And then they're mixing up, you know, they're trying to mix up God in it. You know? And, you know, they have to do it God's way. You know? Everybody, you know, people want to live how they choose to live, but they don't want to live by the word of God. And all they want to do is just say, well, you know, Jesus loves me. God loves me. You know, isn't God full of love? You know, aren't you Christians supposed to love? Uh, yes, but the Bible says a whole lot, <laughs> you know. It's a whole lot more than just the love, you know, and this is why, you know, this is why people um, hate, you know, the Bible, they hate Christians and all of that. And, and granted, I know that there are a lot of, you know, some people have had bad experiences, you know, in church with, you know, pastors or people in the church and all of that but yet and still and i get that because like i said i've had bad experiences here and there but i had to grow from that and know that this relationship is about me and the lord i was created for his glory okay he didn't just create us just so that we can live life all willy you know willy-nilly do what we want to do dance party drink smoke have sex do what we want to do no he created us for his purpose for his glory we were created in his image to serve him you know yes he gives us a life you know he'll give us a career and all of that but first and foremost our lives are you know we were created for his purpose for his glory You know, and, you know, and it just saddens me to see so many people, you know, throw that away with thinking that they can live a better life than what God originally planned for them. They're going to take matters into their own hands and live how they choose to live. <clears throat> you know, and quick testimony. And I'm going to get back into these uh, two scriptures here. You know, there was a time in my life, um, I left ministry, I left, I was, I was really young. I got married at 18, you know, to this uh, guy who was a few years older than me and everything. And he was a minister and all of that. And we were living our lives like 80 year old people, you know, no age shaming. But <laughs> this is how we thought we were supposed to live, you know, back then or whatever. This is like early 90s. And, you know, things went on in the marriage because we were so young and we were just trying so hard to, you know, live this perfect lifestyle. We didn't have any fun. It was just, you know, just church, whatever. And, you know, because back then, the people within the, the, the Christian community they did make you feel like oh, you just couldn't have any type of fun, you know, but you're supposed to have a balanced life, you know, live your life with balance, you know, but you can't just go, you know, so far out there in the world and do things that are ungodly, but have fun. You know what I mean? Have good, clean fun, right? Anyhow, long story short, you know, he went his way, I went mine, you know, what have you. I'll probably put this in another video um, about some things that, that happened or what have you. Because I feel like it will bless someone. After that marriage, I just, you know, number one, like I said, I was 18. He was about six years older than me. I just said, you know what, I'm going to come into my own. I'm, I'm you know, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to live my life how I choose to live it. I'm in control now. You know, I'm I'm not worried about, you know, these Christian folks or what have you. 
he, you know, he stepped out, I stepped out, what have you, we're done. Okay, fine. I'm going to do me now. And I don't care what anyone have to say. So what did I do? I clubbed, I partied. You know, I had boyfriends, I, I had, you know, I dated. I lived, you know, out there in the world and everything. I lived my life. I did what I felt like I wanted to do and no one could stop me. And I felt empowered. And, you know, so I get it. I totally get it. But yet and still, <clears throat> I felt like I was in, in control of my life, but I really wasn't. God just protected me. He, you know, he had mercy on me. I was living by his grace and mercy because anything could happen. I was clubbing out there in South Beach in Miami because, you know, I'm a Florida girl here. I was all over the place. Running the streets, doing whatever. Up until, you know, I got pregnant with my son. So I had to slow down or what have you and thank God for him my life change or what have you and I had to rededicate my life back to the Lord you know because I was just on this path of destruction you know so like I said <clears throat> it can be just sexual immorality period because that was the path I was on sexual immorality um, the, the pride of life you know Thinking so highly of myself. You know, all of that. You know, just lived a life that was not, you know, pleasing to God. But I thank the Lord for his grace and mercy because I had to repent and rededicate my life back to the Lord. And this is why, you know, I'm passionate today. I've, I've been there, done that. I can write a book about it, and I probably will. Who knows about some other things. But you cannot live life on your own, your own terms. That this is not, you know, to live life in, in your own knowledge and power and think that, you're, that you have more knowledge than the Lord. That's not a lifestyle that you're supposed to live. Okay, so I pray that someone will take heed tonight. Okay, anyhow, so let me get back. Um, thank you, Lord. Let me see, let me go to Romans. I want to share Romans uh, chapter 1, uh, 26 and 27. It's also Romans 1, 29 through 32. Let's see here. Um, this up so fast and I'm by myself just going on you know going over these scriptures and everything I don't want to go 
so long with this video. Okay, so just bear with me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay, here we go. For, for this cause, this is uh, verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vowed affections. For even their women did not change the natural use into that which is against nature. And 27, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their own, I'm sorry, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their era which was meet. So, you know, again, there's so many scriptures um, that is against men and men, women and women, you know, so I don't care how we feel about it. Again, this is about pleasing God. Okay, so yeah, and this is this is very interesting. Um, yeah, for even their women did did change the natural use into which um, is against nature, and men um, not having a natural, you know, use for a woman. And don't we see that today? You know, <laughs> we. It's, it's taking place like like crazy. You know, you have a lot of men out here who are actually competing with women, you know, for, for a man, you know, or women who feels, you know, as if they have to compete with a man for a man. No, that <laughs> that is unnatural, that is ungodly, okay? And a woman who doesn't have the natural affection for a man, that, that is ungodly, okay? Give your life to the Lord and let the Lord change you, okay? And then there's Romans 1, 29 through 32, okay? And I'm going to cut it here because, yeah, this went a little bit longer than what I expected but anyhow I just had to come on and just say something and I you know I honestly pray that someone will take heed to the word of God and repent okay all right give me, give me one second here You know, because these people, just because they're rich and, you know, famous and everything, they do not have it together the way that it seems, you know. And I pray for Janelle Monet. I pray for her. Because uh, she, she truly, she needs the Lord. She came from, you know, what seems to be a good family, uh, you know, Christian background and everything. And I pray that she does return back to her roots. I pray that she returns, um, you know, back to her roots so that she can develop her own personal relationship with the Lord. But, you know, again, Repent and do it God's way. We all have to. Okay. And, you know, I just want to leave with this one, this one last scripture, which is Romans, obviously, Romans 10 and 9, which is that if I can, uh, shall confess with that mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, from the dead, excuse me, thou shalt be saved. 
Okay, so repent. <clears throat> this is the scripture that you should go to. Read it for yourself. And, you know, just have your own personal relationship with the Lord. And you have to have faith and believe. The Bible is not a fairy tale book. It's real. I've experienced the Lord in many ways in my life and still learning him. Because, you know, we have to have faith, you know, on this journey. And sometimes our faith isn't where it should be. But, you know, look at um, the changes that God have made in your life so far. You know, if you're struggling with faith, look what he has already done in your life. You know, where some it's been some serious challenges or how he have, how he have already delivered you. Think back on those things. And this is what I do. You know, and then certain things going on in my life, I have to apply, you know, that mustard seed faith and allow the Lord to grow that. Okay. So anyhow, I pray that you all have been blessed. Thank you again for vibing with me. And I will definitely be back with more commentary. Take care. God bless you.